Welcome to a video on procedural terrain generation, infinite landscapes and their inner workings. Let's dive in! It's been a while since my last video and I'd like to share the journey that reshaped my approach to game development. You may have heard about the biggest mistake many solo developers make on their first project. And I made it too. I aimed to create a massive open world game because I love exploring new worlds. However, I quickly miscalculated the time required to build an open world RPG the size of Gothic or Skyrim on my own. Plus, I wasn't proficient in coding back then and was limited to Unreal Engine's blueprint system. So I decided to scrap that project and focus on learning C++. It was a steep learning curve, but my prior experiences in game development helped a bit. Since then, I've worked on several C++ projects and now I started a new Unreal Engine project, which I'm going to show you. Seeing how much work is needed to make an open world game solo made me realize that I need to do something different. This is where procedural generation came into play. I was fascinated by the idea of generating a landscape that could expand infinitely. Of course, such large maps can feel empty and repetitive very quickly if not done right. But if you are an explorer like me, you will appreciate such scope. The project I am going to show you is called Even Drought an open world horror game. But in this video I'll focus solely on the procedural generation process. Now let's have a look at some code. To generate a non-repetitive, infinite terrain, we need an algorithm that produces reliable data. I chose to use Perlin noise because it naturally creates realistic terrain features. When viewed as an image, it looks like this. White pixels denote higher elevations, while darker areas indicate lower regions, effectively visualizing the terrain's topography. We start with a 2D grid, where each grid point has unique coordinates. Then we determine the cell the grid point is currently in and compute a pseudo-random gradient vector for each corner using a hash function. Technically, these values are not truly random, but pseudo-random as they are generated from a fixed seed input that simply mimics randomness. This means if the seed remains unchanged, so do the gradients. Next, we have to interpolate between the four corners to get our noise value. This process gives us height values across the grid, forming a basic 2.5D landscape, a flat plane with height variations. To create more natural terrain, we incorporate multiple octaves, each adding a layer of noise. By adjusting frequency and amplitude each iteration, we make sure to get varied and realistic results for our landscape. With this foundation, I experimented by adding different noise layers to control various terrain features independently. Yet something was missing. Some realism. That led me to explore hydraulic erosion simulations, which produced detailed flow maps and river formations. However, these realistic simulations were extremely CPU intensive and at this point I wasn't ready to dive into shader coding to offload these calculations to the GPU. That challenge pushed me to create my own game engine, forcing me to learn about shaders and graphics programming. While building an engine is one of the most complex projects you can undertake, the knowledge gained is invaluable. Although my engine isn't complete, I can now generate and render entire planets, teaching me much about graphics, shaders and engine architecture. But I concluded that erosion wasn't suitable for this project, especially since I aimed for an infinite landscape. I experimented with pre-computing some parts of the terrain for erosion effects, but the approach led to a rabbit hole of issues. Eventually, I found a suitable method to get a fake erosion effect which has minimal computational cost. By pre-computing the gradient for each vertex in the noise algorithm, 
I can highlight certain terrain features by smoothing out others across different octaves. For those interested in more details, there is an excellent explanation by Josh's channel. I'll include links to his video and a related blog post in the description. Next, to make the landscape infinite, we split the terrain into smaller chunks that load dynamically as the player moves. Multi-threading is essential here to maintain performance. However, since mesh building must occur on the main thread, I limit the number of chunks that can be generated per second to only one chunk every 20 milliseconds to avoid blocking the main thread, because this is where the game is running. There are many additional steps between generating noise and building chunks. I plan to cover the in-depth architecture of my infinite landscape generator in a future video. So please let me know in the comments if you'd like more details on that. So far the landscape looks impressive, but it still feels a bit empty. To bring it to life I developed a custom foliage spawner. Since Unreal Engine's procedural content generation system isn't designed for infinite landscapes, I came up with my own system. I generate a grid of weights to determine where and what type of foliage can spawn. This grid also serves other functions later on. I use different weight values for different cell types. For example, there are blocked cells, which mark trees, rocks or buildings, shadow cells, which can be located under trees and indicate that larger plants are less likely to grow, and also other cell types for additional purposes like pathways. The foliage spawner randomly selects a foliage type for each cell checking parameters like cell weight, foliage density and the terrain steepness at the current location. To optimize performance, I for example skip cells that are already marked as blocked. It isn't fully optimized yet, but the generation already happens pretty fast. The bottleneck is the spawning of the foliage mesh, which has to be done by the main thread again. To prevent the game from freezing, I again limit how fast foliage can be spawned. Now the landscape is no longer empty, but why should the player spawn in the middle of nowhere? To not have to answer this question I implemented a procedurally generated starting village, of course. For the village generation I use the same weight grid as with the foliage, but this time I process the cells in a spiral square pattern to grow the village from the center outward. For each building I can set limits on how many of this type of building can spawn, whether a building type is unique and can only be spawned once, and I can adjust the population capacity, which is basically an integer representing the number of people that can live in this building. Expanding the village is as simple as increasing the population count. New building types can easily be added using a data table. To connect the buildings I implemented a pathfinding algorithm to create pathways from each building to the village center. I am using an A star algorithm which is a very common algorithm to find the shortest route. While the pathfinding itself is fast, flattening the terrain for pathways is computationally intensive. When flattening the terrain I use a falloff to avoid abrupt cuts. However, when buildings of different heights are close to each other, sharp slopes can be desirable. To be able to dynamically adjust the falloff as required, I check the distance to the next blocking cell in a few directions. This is fine to flatten areas where buildings get spawned, but when flattening pathways there are a lot more height values that have to be adjusted and this adds up very quickly. Here is still a lot of room for improvement, but the village generation isn't done in real time. It occurs only when the landscape is initially generated. So even if it takes anywhere from 0.5 to 10 seconds, depending on the village size, it won't affect gameplay at all. In addition, I've developed a structure spawning system that randomly places various buildings across the landscape. The spacing between structures can be adjusted easily and new structures can be added. To hide yet undiscovered areas, I check if neighboring chunks are generated. 
and if one is missing or not yet generated, I place a static mesh onto that chunk. I adjusted the material to fit the law of even drought. Currently I am working on an AI navigation system tailored for this infinite landscape, since Unreal Engine's built-in system isn't a fit here. With my existing pathfinding algorithm and weight grid, this should be straightforward. There is still much to improve. The idea of adding base building and terrain deformation is also stuck in my head for quite some time now, and I welcome your suggestions. I've also thought about releasing the infinite landscape generator as a plugin once it is fully optimized. It offers extensive parameter adjustments via blueprints, supports pre-generation in the editor, and runtime generation can be turned on and off. It also allows custom buildings and foliage simply by adding a new data table row. Additionally, I could also add the erosion logic back in, which currently only works for finite landscapes. So runtime generation has to be turned off. If this interests you, please let me know. While I haven't shown any gameplay footage here, I plan a separate video on Even Shroud that will cover both development and lore of the game. When you subscribe, you will never miss any updates or new content. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and leave your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching, until next time!